Hello, welcome to Fantasy Grounds. I'm Doug Davison, president of SmiteWorks, and today I'm going to show you how to uh, make a tile pack. In this case, I'm going to do a tile pack for a Black Scrolls medieval fantasy castle, which I'm working alongside Jonathan Nelson at AW Games uh, with the great graphics by Antal Kinninger. And um, so I'm going to start off here and show you I've got a new campaign created. I always recommend creating a brand new campaign to kind of get the tiles set up. Uh, and I'm going to add line of sight to each of them. So what I've basically gone and done so far is I have a uh, my campaign folder, and then I called it Master AW Map Pack Castle. And then I have an Images folder underneath here, and then uh, you could just put it directly in the the root of the Images folder if you would like. And then I have resized each of them, and I've got the dimensions shown here. And within File Explorer, you can right click and say Dimensions. As you and that will add the dimensions there just so you can quickly scan through. So I have a lot of 12 by 12 tiles. I'm going to build them on a 100 pixel per grid square um, size scale. That could be adjusted. You could set it to whatever you want, but that's kind of what we're going to use for most of our packs. So that'll make it so that it'll just seamlessly snap in without even having to use the uh, the scaling tool within our tile, uh, tile stamper mode. So here you've got uh, a bunch of those. So I've got 12 by 12s, 12 by 6, 6 by 6, uh, and then down at the very bottom you see I've got a couple two, uh, 200 by 200, which are 2 by 2 squares, and then I have a couple 2 by 1s and a couple 1 by 1s. In the case of doors, uh, I could very quickly show you what I'm doing with doors. So, um, actually, let's leave that one alone. Let's see, how about this one? So, um, what I basically did with doors. I want to show you here in Photoshop. So basically I just moved the door up to the edge, but I still left it at 100 by 100 with a uh, transparent pixel. This should allow me to rotate this around and uh, and cover each facing, and it should hopefully snap in place. We're going to test that later and see if that worked out. Uh, so now that I have all of the images in here, uh, you'll notice that when I open up images in my campaign, there's nothing there. That's okay. That's normal. What you're going to do instead is you're going to go to Assets, and then here I've got all of my asset windows, and I don't need that much. Shrink it down a bit. So assets, and then I've got images. And then under the images, uh, this is going to have all of my modules that I have open, but I'm going to look for a folder named campaign. And so again, images on your assets and then campaign. Click on that. That has my folder that I need. And then what I'm going to basically do is for every one of these, I'm just going to drag them over to here. And then it'll open up that image. Uh, let's see, slide it over. And I'm going to set a grid. I'm going to set the grid to 100. And that shows my grid. Um, we probably, it looks like this one, I'm going to resize this one as well. This one's probably not quite right. So I'll, set, I'll want this to also be uh, fit so that it'll just fit perfectly in a, a square. So. I'll update this in just a moment. But for now, uh, let's leave that one alone. I'll go to the 2x2s. Two Those should fit. Again, add a grid. In this case, there's a column here and a column here that I want to add a, some form of occluder around. Probably a terrain occluder, just so that if people are on the other side of this, they will uh, have you know some blocking of some line of sight. So in this case, it's kind of a pseudo three-dimensional, so I could put a circle around the top, uh, but if I wanted to also have the circle around the bottom, I should probably just freeform that, and I'll do it as a terrain. And um, a little bit of the challenge is if you click outside, let's see, let me go back to selection mode, I'll delete all of those, so let's try it one more time. So I'm going to click around here, might have double clicked. And maybe one more and then double click. And if you see that you don't like it, like see that's kind of a wobbly, maybe I didn't do a good job. So you can switch back to selection mode and you can kind of adjust, you know, however, however you like basically. Uh, so that's that one. Let me do the other one real quick. So we want this whole pillar to basically block visibility. And then double click to end or hit enter. 
Uh, if you've gone too far and you need to go back um, one, so like let's let's say for instance I'm going to do something here. So if I'm clicking, you'll see it's going to complete my polygon as I go around. So it's going to keep you know having the final piece in there. If I want to like not click here, and I, that's my last point, then I can just hit Escape and it redoes uh, from there. If you want to select all of them, you can hit Select. You can just double click on it. It'll select the entire group and then I can click and move it around. Or I can just hit delete or use this delete button here. I'll show you a couple other real quick factors real quick. So here I've got uh, in line mode, click, click, click. Double click. Let's say if I want to get rid of this piece only, I could just get rid of this one and then hit delete and it'll uh, finish it up for me like that. So a couple little steps you can do. So you've got the wall mode, terrain mode, doors and then secret uh, area so that looks good for this one so I would go through and do that for each of these okay so uh, I reloaded my campaign with just the basic theme this is a little bit easier right now to grab windows so we go back to here images campaign get back to where I was uh, let's see I got the 2x2 two two base that I just loaded in I added a grid and, and made sure that it fit corner to corner fit into the grid nicely um, I'm going to pause and just go through and do all of these real quick. There's nothing exciting here, and then we'll jump right into the, the wall. Okay, so I've done all of the floor tiles except for this one, and this one would be one that I would uh, maybe treat a little bit differently than the other ones. I would not do uh, as I've done on like these columns. You can see I basically defined terrain around each of those. Uh, I would not do that here. I would just make a wall. And just uh, you know, utilize the wall functionality. So you know, you could very quickly just kind of click, go around. Uh, the thing with walls is I like to hover around the outside edge, and that's very important for tiles so that they snap together. Uh, because if you have just a single line, and let's say your line is just a few pixels away from the edge point. Um, Let's say from here it's 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 right in this position. Maybe that's 10 pixels up, for instance. So if you do another tile and that tile happens to be let's say just nine or eight pixels up, then what you're going to have is you're going to have two lines that are not going to connect, and then someone standing in this position, a player, would be able to potentially see through the walls at different angles. So by doing these boxes. Um, the chance of two boxes snapping together sh should be much greater. Plus, we have a tool that will clean this up and basically line this up so that it's exactly at the image edge. And then that plus this width will allow them to snap and have no gaps whatsoever. So if you don't do that, if you just push a line in the middle, your tiles will not uh, will not line up. So you, this is very important that, that you do it this way. Uh, the other thing is that when players are looking into here, they will actually have a little bit of a peek through and then we'll see a little bit of this texture inside of the wall. So um, you're not going to completely lose the texture and the, and the kind of coolness factor of this particular wall if you just follow the outline of the edge. Uh, the other final thing is that the shadows will cast exactly at the edge piece so that let's say I had an open area below and I've got a token in this area it would shine the light kind of here. I'll demonstrate that when I go into the testing of this actual tile pack but that's the sort of stuff you want to keep in mind when you're building your own tiles. All right, so now I've done all of these kind of top portions. I'm going to very quickly uh, start on something that's a little bit more interesting. Again, you just drag it into your images. It makes a new uh, image record for us. That's what we're going to be able to use. Uh, here I've got a window. So you could uh, look at windows a couple different ways. Um, probably making it a door might make sense. Um, and then again, you want to do the inside and the outside edges of the wall. So uh, what I would normally do is first you're going to come through, you're going to define your grid size just like before. This should fit exactly in a 6x6 six six area, 2x2 two two on the outside, and then um, this one, there's probably going to want to have doors in here. So that's a little bit of a tricky issue uh, just kind of looking at it because there's no way into this room. So um, that's going to present a challenge. Uh, I, I'm assuming we might want to just make a door here or here. Uh, it works great for, you know, in Photoshop, I could just drop a door over top. Um, but in our situation, that's not going to be useful. So what I could do is I could just leave an opening and then they could have a door there. Um, but then I'd have to assume, well, where's the door on this side? I don't know. That, that presents, presents some challenges. 
Okay, so I'm looking at another tile which is decorated and I see that there's a door here and there is no door here so I would assume that there would be some sort of a secret doorway entrance into this somehow. Uh, so I'm going to make a little bit of a uh, leap of faith, educated guess, and uh, let's, let's move this off to the side. I'll do this one first and then I'll try to copy the same sort of thing. So again, I'm going to go through here, select my grid size. Uh, I'm going to do my doors first. So I'm going to go here, do terrain, do doors, and I like to kind of uh, just outline the whole door. So what that's going to basically do is the player here will see the entirety of the door um, and then they click on it to open it. You could shift click on it as a GM to lock it and then the player will not be able to open it, but they'll see the, the door. They'll see the inside and the outside of that door, which is kind of neat. Um, I'm going to add a secret door wall somewhere around here. And so to do that, you can switch to secret and I'm going to use the rectangles again. Okay, and you see it's got like a, do a dashed line. So I'm just going to put a secret door here. I don't know if that's where it was originally intended to be or not, uh, but that should work. So now I'm going to go back into wall mode. It's very important that if you have a secret door, make sure that you connect these two pieces along the edge uh, and these two pieces here. So I'm going to start here, click, click, and it should snap to those points. And then hit enter. And you see it's a little bit uh, not straight there. So there's a couple things you can do. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways to clean this up. So I'm going to just draw a straight line to here. That's going to inter, uh, create two intersecting lines. So I can delete that. And um, I can now delete this whole one and then try it again. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do my walls. And I'm just going to connect from up here. I'm going to go past it. And I'll show you what I'm doing here and just the reason, the reason why I'm doing that now. So it's going to make intersection points all along here. So what you can do now is I can say, okay, well, I like these points. They snapped in perfectly, so I'm going to get rid of these. Um, oops, I did a little too sloppy. So go to selection mode, grab these. Now I can just delete all of those, and, it's, and it moves it back up. You see how that now snaps nice and neat. The walls are straight. That's fine. Uh, those all connect okay. That's fine. Oh, that does not connect. Um, so that's a problem. So these need to be brought out farther. And this needs to be brought out farther. And that'll make a point here and here. So now I can get rid of this point and this point. And I can get rid of this one. And now I can get rid of this one. So it's a little fiddly uh, to get it in place and to get it lined up perfectly. But the nice thing is that you want this wall, especially on secret doors more than anything else, you don't want any kind of gap whatsoever. So you want that to be perfectly lined up with the wall. We're going to get rid of these pieces here in just a second. So you can do that. I can come through and do this other wall here. Again, I'm going to go overboard first like that and that's going to create those pieces now I can get rid of these I gotta to switch to select mode there we go I can get rid of those that's nice and tight uh, go back here to there and then from here to there, here to here, and now I'm just going to go and clean all these up. So select these two, delete these two, delete. And normally, if uh, Fantasy Ground senses that in this particular case, it's going to ignore all these extra points because. Once you, once you cross the red line, you don't go any farther. Uh, vision is blocked right at the first red line. And then there's a little bit of like a peek through effect. So that won't cause any sort of noticeable 
uh, negative effect. So that should all work good. Uh, I'm just going to keep doing these. This is going to be a little bit trickier here. So we'll see how well this all snaps. And then from here, use the arrow key just to slide the whole map up to there. Clean up that. Clean up that. Oops, my arrow keys did not. Let's try that again. All right, now this is a little bit of a jumbly looking mess. So um, what you can do is you can just get rid of this. I like to drag it to the corner like that. Now I've got a nice, all my edges, all my uh, points are snapped to each other. Looks good. Secret door looks solid. Uh, so that looks good. Now, some people I've noticed are putting terrain around these things. I would not put terrain if there's anything up against the edge of a wall. There's no real benefit on, like if someone's here hiding what's behind this mummy on this wall. I don't think that really provides any good play benefit. So I would leave this completely clear and unfettered of any sort of terrain. Um, same thing with these chests. It just doesn't really add anything to the play experience. So I would leave all of those off and, uh, and you know, just kind of go from there. Um, one other thing I just noticed. So I made a wall. That this wall is going to block that secret door. So even though <laughs> there's, a, there's a secret door there, that's not going to help. So what I'm going to do is uh, draw a line across to here. And it's going to... Go selection mode. Delete it like that. And now I'm going to hit the X instead. And then X will delete that point. Just to be safe, I'm going to make sure that I have a wall from here to here, enter, and from here to here. And now I'm going to delete those. There we go. All right, there we go. Clean that up a little bit. That was a little confusing. We'll, we'll do that uh, again here in just a second, and we'll retest it. All right, so that was this one, um, Armory, the one that's empty. We'll basically do pretty much the same thing. Uh, I could, in fact, copy this XML and save myself some work since they're pretty much exactly the same. I might just do that. All right, so uh, this one, bathroom. Bathroom night, 12 by 12 tile. Okay, so this one's a little different. If you can look here, you can see there's a looks like a solid wall here, and then there's an opening, and then a solid wall, and then that kind of goes all the way around. I don't know if you would treat, you probably wouldn't treat these as a door. You would just let people walk through. That would be my guess, because it wouldn't block vision. And then this is a raised kind of staircase, so I can show you what I would do there. So all right, so first I'm going to go set this as 100. All right, so what I like to do uh, on staircases is I only build the terrain up to five feet up on the top of the staircase. In this case, the entire thing could be set up as a terrain. Um, it would allow anyone down here to see up into the whole you know, extent of the terrain, but someone on the side would have the vision blocked from the other side of the little raised area. So I think that would be a pretty cool effect. Um, and then what we would do is go here, go to terrain, All right, so that would be my terrain. 
let's see, I don't think I see any other terrain or there's a big door here. So let's go ahead and add a big door. Okay, and now I'm going to add my walls here and here. I think that, I can't tell what that is. I think that's just a painting. So it looks like the wall goes all the way like that. And then all the way like that. Again, I went a little bit over because what I would do is I would then switch to selection mode and I would just drag that to there so that it doesn't have any goofy overlaps. Uh, in fact, I could drag this one, grab all those points and drag to there. Um, so it was trying to snap to that point, so I'm holding control to get it to not snap. Uh, anytime you get close to another point, it'll automatically snap to that point. If you don't want that to happen, you just need to hold control. So I'm going to highlight both of these two because I want to grab the point on the door and the point on my wall, drag them to there. And then this point, I don't want it to snap, so I want to control, drag it over so it, it still hugs the bottom of the image. Okay. And I'm using my mouse wheel to zoom in and out at different points wherever my mouse is. And then you can uh, click and drag here to zoom around if you want to do that. Or you can uh, click and hold the middle mouse to zoom here. All right, so let's grab some more walls. This one, yes, is a little tricky. So maybe yeah. Do you want to show? Probably. I mean, you could do this a couple different ways. Yeah, I don't know. Let, we might have to test this out before we go too far and see if that's what we want uh, the effect to look like when you're kind of looking through this area or not. These kind of pseudo 3D maps uh, can, they look really, really super cool. It's just a matter of, let's do Control Z. Uh oh. Get out of select mode. Here we go. Delete. I did. I'm not sure what I just did, but that was not cool. Uh, let's see. There. Here. Okay. Yeah, I did something funky. All right, so uh, I'll keep doing that here. To fast forward the video when I get to this part. And that's a solid wall here. It's really just these archways, and how do we want to handle the archways? Like that. So let's redo this piece here. Again, if I want to put a point really close to another point, I have to hold control. 
Again, I'm going to go a little bit beyond and snap it because I've got a wall here. There we go. Clean those up. Clean these up. Okay, and let's see, there's a wall in this other. Uh, yep, yeah, sorry, I did a couple goofy things here. Let me delete that, clean up after myself. And I don't need these points for this extra point here. All right, so if you do mess up, it's pretty easy to, to recover. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this wall. There we go, and I guess I could just do that to be honest, that would probably be a little cleaner. So remember to switch back to select mode. Okay. All right, so that's good there. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have these pillars blocked. I should just probably have the top of the wall. That would be probably a good enough and clean sort of experience for most most people. That's the thing is you want to make it so that it's it's a fun experience to play, but you don't want it to you don't want to overthink it. So I'm actually going to get rid of all of those and just redo those as very simple. Rectangles. And even these. And I'll go ahead and get rid of those. All right. So yeah, just simple rectangles will probably cover most of what you need. All right. So that's this one. Just do a quick scan. Uh, these I wouldn't make terrain because you could clearly see through them all of those trees so that's basically what I would do for this one uh, let me do a few more there's another ballroom this is the same ballroom it's just day and night uh, bath empty bath tile bed chamber so I'm gonna do one of each and then I'm gonna copy the XML for each one I'll show you how to do that later alright so here's one it's got a door there a door here uh, a couple chests this looks like it's all kind of solid walls for a bath. Okay, so again, I'm going to start with my doors. Set my grid. Zoom in a bit. Go here, do my rectangular door first. There's that door. And then this one, uh, I've got a that way. All right. Uh, you could also do another way. You could just do walls. It's not too hard to do. It's really just to kind of uh, click. Again, I always start on the outside so that it makes sure it crosses. And let's see, take there. Okay. 
guess that's a step down. That's probably not actually. Yeah, that shouldn't block my site. Yeah, so that should just continue on actually. So let's do that. So let's drag this to the end. So there, and I will resume. To here. And the outside wall. Use control. Overlap a bit here. It's fine there. I'm going to go a little bit there so it overlaps. You'll see why. <clears throat> excuse me. You'll see why I'm doing kind of some of those. Like, it looks like I missed. It's by design. By design. All right. I like straight lines, so I like to get rid of. I like to have it build intersection points for me. That way I know that there's no gaps, everything snaps into place. Same thing here, I left a gap on purpose so that I could tighten that up. All right, so let's just do a quick scan. Looks like I got the, oh, I need this inside wall here. No big deal. So I will start from here. And go to there. Now I can delete that piece. And I can delete this piece. There. Nice and neat. Everything's good. Uh, are there any train pieces here? Probably not. I'm mean, assuming anyone in the bath can see in and out. If this was a big drop off, then you would, you know, maybe make this ledge, this edge piece here, maybe make that terrain. But that looks good. Let's do the next one. Let's see. There's bath, there's bed chambers. Uh, I'm going to always do the decorated one and then we can copy them. All the bed chamber ones look like they're all the same layout, so we can get by with just doing one. Maybe. Maybe we can. Alright, so. Door. To windows. Uh, windows, you could do terrain, or you could do them as doors. Uh, a couple of different options there. All right, so got my grid on. Let's do the door first. All right, now I'm going to do my walls. So, 
created some problems for myself a little bit because I forgot to do these windows first. Oops, no big deal. There we go. Let's do the windows. And I'll probably just do them as doors. Each one could theoretically be opened up individually. All right, so don't change your uh, your uh, pan while you're in the middle of drawing. You can do it before or after, in between clicks, but not during, because it moves your current position and your cursor and it throws it off. All right, boom, delete. All right, cool. That is actually a screen. Hmm. All right, so I will probably want to make that a terrain piece because that's going to block terrain. How about over here? That's on the floor. It should be fine. All right, so this is clearly a screen. Let's make that a terrain. Okay, that looks good. Okay, and let's see, maybe grab chapel. Let's grab a chapel. And then we'll do a test. Uh, maybe maybe one of the big ones. How about a big dining room? Ah, it's an empty one. We need one with doors. There we go. Two doors, it looks like. Big door and a back door. Tables, probably not enough to count for terrain. So now I'll just do the walls. There. All right, so on a real long stretches like that, if you don't have the whole map in place at once, um, you might want to zoom out. But if you don't want to zoom out, you could, you know, draw it. But then as soon as you let go, if you move, if you pan, let's see, what am I doing? What is that doing? That's weird. Get back over there. If you pan the map while you're in the middle of drawing a point, it might throw things off. So what you could do is you could just drag those after the fact by selecting the endpoints. Should be good to go. There we 
There we go. And if we want that to cast a little bit of a shadow, I, I would kind of leave that. Um, again, you don't want to over overdo it and hug the edge on all of that because it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really affect gameplay. Now I'm just going to go clean these up. I could delete that or just slide it to the corner. I just slide it to the corner normally. And then you want to select both the points with the lasso there we go, or marquee selection. All right, so up here, these two I can get rid of. Get rid of these two. Delete and delete. Okay, cool. So I think that one's good to go. And um, what I've basically done is as, I, as I've dragged all of these over, uh, what you will see is, uh, let me open up my folder. So under the campaign folder, there's campaign uh, XML, there's DB XML. If I look at this in, say, Notepad, just be careful you don't make a change to it. You will see this sort of information. So it has all of these XY points for each one of the images. So it has the image name and uh, or the image name here, its location, and then the XY points. All the way down. So, uh, you could send us this file, this dbxml, and campaign, or just zip up the whole folder, send us this. We'll extract this information, and that'll make an XML for each one. Uh, I've got a little program that does that. Let me load that up real quick. Okay, so i got my little folder, my little program. I will grab the input XML from here. db.xml and this is my image folder. Extract. Okay. So uh, what it basically did close that down, is in my images folder. I now have a series of XML documents. And you notice that the name of this document matches with the name of all the other ones. And then I can actually, if I know that like bath tile is the same as all of the other uh, bath tiles, I can actually copy this and make multiple copies. So um, I'm just going to really quickly check and see bath tile. Let me go in sort order here. We have empty, we have another one, so we'll just have an empty one. Okay, so what I can do is I can copy this, paste it, and there's my copy. And then I want to name this one uh, here, F2, F2. All right, so now I have basically copied my uh, line of sight definitions. Same thing, I think, with, let's see, bed chambers. So bed chambers, uh, there's one, two, three, I don't know if they're actually this, oh, this is the queen. The queen one is probably a little bit different. So there's just a queen empty and then a queen decorated. So, okay, I probably don't want to copy those. Uh, I will just copy one here and make the empty version. So I got the uh, tiled one and then the empty one. Two, two, boom. All right, and then I think dining room. Where's my other XML? Dining room here. 
There's an empty version of that as well. So we'll make that a copy. That's V2. Okay, so that gives me probably enough to play with and do some testing. Uh, armory, I guess I could do the armory empty one also. Okay, so now that I have all of these, uh, I want to build them into a folder that's very basic in its layout. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. As soon as I get to the right place. All right, so, all right, here we go. So this folder, let me uh, put that here and then this one here, okay. So the module, just give it a name. This, in this case, it's AAWFG any MFC for magnificent fit, uh, or uh, medieval fantasy castle. And then there's a definition file. The definition file is just um, where did it go? It is basically just this as a name, an author, and a rule set. Set the rule set to any. Set the name to whatever you want it to show up under uh, the folder structure. This is what it's going to give its its folder name, and then the author uh, as well. So just give it that. Give it a thumbnail, uh, and then just make an images folder. So in the images folder, uh, I'm going to get rid of all of these because these are really old images, and I'm just going to copy all of these into here. And including the XML files. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all these, zip it up, make a zip file, and then I'm going to change it to a dot mod. And then I'm going to go back to my, instead of my campaign folder, I'm going to go to my module folder, and then I'm just going to move it to there, replace my previous version. And now I can uh, go back to a generic campaign and test it. So I'm going to close out of here and then retest. Okay, so I'm going to say host and I'm going to open uh, not the same one because I don't want to test it in the same campaign that I was using earlier. So I've got a 5e test one here. Make sure I don't have any extensions loaded. Uh, start that one. Okay, so my campaign is loaded. And go through here under images. I called it, it was called Magnificent, or no, I keep calling it Magnificent, Medieval, Medieval Fantasy Castles Tile Pack. There you go, so those are all of my tiles. If I go to create a new map, let's do Empty One. Castle test. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set my grid back to 100. I can show you in a second how um, it, you can really set it to be any size you want. And let's see, let's grab in. If you just drag it here directly over, um, that that will work, but it won't apply any scaling effects. So if you want to verify that it's going to scale properly. So 6 by 2 is what it would be. Now I can just click and click and click and click and it should snap in. So th those are how you would load in tiles. You can rotate it around. So if there's alternate things, you know, build little corridors, that sort of stuff. If you would like, Let's grab uh, the armory, the one with the actual doors that we can see. Let's grab that. Let's say that there's armory here. And let's see, did we do, I think we did a ballroom. We did the bath. Let's do a bath next to it. All right, let's see just very quickly what that looks like. Let's test it out. So let's look at line of sight. Looks like it brought that over okay. 
if we want that to be spun around, let's actually let's take this this bath tile and let's rotate it like that. And now look at it. Yeah, see, there we go. A couple of rooms. One room into there. One room into there. Let's test the line of sight. Let's grab. Uh, say there's a bearded devil taking a bath. Doesn't want to be interrupted. But our player does not have any sense of privacy. So he's just going to come right in. He's going to move around. You can see he can't see through the walls. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see um, there we go. You can actually see um, he can see a little bit of the wall. It's called the peek through. You can see a little bit of the edges of the walls. That's kind of by design. That is by design. Come over here and he can see there's a door. Open it up. Oh no, I saw the bearded devil taking a bath. Might want to close that and not go in. Or, you know, he didn't notice me. It's fine. He just wanted some soap or towel. And I can go through here. Go. Go into the armory. Hmm. There's something unusual about this armory. Perhaps there's a secret door there. So the GM is able to see that there's a secret door. The player will not actually see that. Um, but if the player clicks in the area, then the GM can open it. Once they open it, then the player will see there's just a hole that they can walk through. So it'll look like a solid wall that they can walk through, but they will see the light shining through it, which is pretty cool. Uh, so there you go. That's, um, that's that one. Let's test a couple of these other assets that we did. Uh, let's see. The empty ones is where it's a little trickier. So let's drag an empty one here. And you can see there's a wall space there, but then the graphic just doesn't quite look right. Looks like there's a door there. I don't know how we want to handle that. That's kind of a weird situation. These really work better with the uh, decorated tiles. And let's see, we had a ballroom, I think. Nighttime and daytime. I guess it's nighttime. I'm already sensing that we'll be able to build some really pretty cool stuff here. Uh, let's see. Probably want more of these corridors. Maybe some columns here. And maybe some stairs, I don't know. What else do we got? We got a chapel, which we haven't really done anything with. So I haven't done any of the uh, line of sight for those yet. Uh, we do have a dining room. I think the dining room. Oh, I didn't do the dining room. So maybe I want to get rid of the dining room that I just added. Oh, we did the big dining room. That's what the problem was. All right, so. Where's the door? The door of the dining room is here on the end. Probably need another hallway. Okay. And we probably need, I don't know, just a generic wall. So I might I might look at doing just a solid wall just to cap some pieces off. Um, let's see what that looks like. All right, so now let's go back to my trusty player as he continues to explore. All right, you can see he can kind of see in these areas. He can come through there.
this part, if you remember, we, we had it raised up. So if I go over to the side, you can see kind of how it makes that shadow. So if I'm here and our bearded devil is on this side, he doesn't see him for that location until he comes around and then exposes him. So that's kind of what terrain will give you. And then if I'm on top of the terrain, I can see easily off both sides. So I can see him from here. I cannot see him from the opposite side. If you don't like that, like if there's some reason why he would be able to see that, you could just open it up and now uh, it doesn't come into play. So that's the, that's what you use terrain for is to determine kind of how those situations are. Uh, let's go explore over here. There's a big door. Open the door into the hallway. Another door here. There you go. And then there's another door that goes off into nothingness. Nothing's behind here. So there you go. That's uh, that's basically what that would look like. We've got oh, you can see the terrain. So as you're going down the hall, the little columns do kind of provide some shadowing. So we could have people hidden over here, and I wouldn't see them until I move around. So. Uh, yeah, play with that, and um, you know the nice thing is these tiles do snap into place, makes it pretty easy to build pretty cool things, and you can mix and match stuff from different sets. Uh, lots of really pretty cool stuff you could do. Let me know what you think.